Well, good morning, YouTube. All right, guys, I'm up here working on Goliath today. We are doing front brakes, and I've got it to this point and just now finally decided to pull the camera out. Uh, I just kind of felt like I wasn't getting the proper braking ability out of it. And these shoes, the liners themselves, are very difficult to see from the little uh, inspection hole in the back. Now, the rears, I can see I got plenty of pad thickness. When I adjust them, I'm pretty confident, and, and they are due for an adjustment. We'll definitely adjust them before we go to Laconia. However, I just felt like I wasn't getting the adjustment out of these. Like, they weren't, they weren't really doing what they needed to do. So, after this trip home from Myrtle Beach, I decided I'm going to pull it all off and inspect them and see how they are. And sure enough, they're down to that where they're close enough. They're not down into the rivets. They haven't completely worn down. They're still that quarter of an inch. So, they're, they're legal still. But in my opinion, they're not good enough. So we're gonna go ahead and pull everything off, take it up to the parts store tomorrow. It's kinda of late in the evening now, you guys see the sun's going down. It's already after eight o'clock. So we'll have to wait till morning to take it. But because there isn't a lookup for a GMC General in any of the parts lookup guides anymore, nobody can look up and just tell me what parts I need. So I literally have to take these off, I'll throw them in the pickup, we'll take it up to the parts store tomorrow and they will compare them and see what they can find to fit. The scary thing is, if they can't find it, I got to come back and put it all back together because we have to go to Laconia next week. So I don't know exactly what we're going to do, but, you know, brake shoes, they should be pretty common. Uh, drums, I, I worry a little bit. I don't know how, how many different styles of drums there are out there. So I'm really hoping that none of this stuff is made of pure unobtainium, like my belt tensioner, which I still am fighting with. But... um it's kind of what we're doing. So right now I've got the drums off. Uh, I got my Centromatic balancers off. They're, they're laying right down there. Um, obviously the wheel's off. Now, if you guys didn't know this, because Goliath is so old, it's actually got the reverse thread on the driver's side. So you actually have to loosen those to tighten them and uh, tighten them to loosen them. So kind of like, like the old Dodges and stuff were some of the old cars back in the days. Now I'm getting ready to go ahead and pull the shoes off of it, but I think I'm going to go ahead and take everything apart. I, I checked my bearings and all that feels good, so I don't think I'm going to mess with any of that. I don't feel any play in it. Everything rolls nice and smooth. I checked the oil levels. Everything there is good. No reason to believe I have an issue there. But like the S cams, which these aren't really even an S, they're kind of a weird trapezoid shape. Uh, springs, the, uh, the air chambers, the slack adjusters, even the air hoses. I may take the whole assembly off and just replace everything, assuming that the parts are available because this is all probably OEM stuff from 1987. This truck doesn't have enough miles on it for that stuff to have been replaced like in a routine maintenance. So chances are, these are the originals. And I know that sounds crazy, but remember, there's just barely 200,000 miles on this truck and uh, it really is a possibility that it's all original. So we're gonna go ahead and put all new on it if it's available, just because I like to do things thorough. And that way I know that with the mileage that we put on this truck, I won't have to worry about it for a long, long time. Just the routine adjustments. Hopefully, I won't have to replace any parts for many, many years to come. All right, guys, I am back. Yes, it's the next morning, and I'm out here working on Goliath again. And it just got so dark last night, and I had to fight trying to get some of this stuff off. And my hands were covered with goop. Just wasn't good to... Uh, to record on now as you guys saw in that last clip the sun was going down so it was almost dark when i started that so by the time i got it all done i was out here with a flashlight trying to get the rest of it apart but here you go you can see i got the the brake shoes off now the pins that ran through these holes right here they were very very difficult to try to get out they were kind of seized in there had to beat them really hard with a hammer i got the brake chamber off i was not able to get the s cam out let's even call that an s cam it's not quite s shaped like they usually are um, because the hub is the hub face is in the way so if I slide it out it hits so without having to undo the bearings and everything else we're not going to mess with that I've inspected it it's in really good shape I think once I clean it up it'll be fine there I can still lubricate it and uh, continue use with it like that but even the splines on the back side guys everything back here looks really really good of course it's filthy and guys, I don't know why, but it looks like my camera settings are all wrong. I didn't change anything, but everything looks way too whitewashed. All right, hopefully I got that fixed. Anyway, I was getting ready to head up to uh, Hayesville to go compare all the parts and see if we can get some new pieces. But I decided to wait because Katie needs to go to Hayesville in a little bit anyways. And it's about 15 miles there, 15 miles back. 
So there's no sense in making two trips. She's got to be there around 2, 2.30. And right now it's almost 1 o'clock. So there's no sense in me going right now, coming back, and then having to take her back over there afterwards. So I will take her over to her appointment, drop her off, go handle this, check the P.O. box, and uh, get back over here. And hopefully we'll have the parts coming within the next day or two to get this all fixed. Hey guys, and speaking of the P.O. box, I received something today from Michael Rain. You guys remember Michael Rain? He's the one that won the drone giveaway and I met him over in South Carolina to give it to him. Well, I guess he had a, a really nice microphone that he wasn't using anymore. And it's actually one of the pretty fancy ones with the whole dead cat and all that stuff on it. I don't know exactly how I'm gonna use it yet, but it looks like it's really high quality. So hopefully I'll find a way to be able to make it work with our setup. So Michael, I just wanted to say thank you. And uh, you know, I'm not much of writing letters, so instead made you a video. Guys, and if you have anything you wanna send to me, any type of mail or stuff like that and everything, you can always send it to the PO Box. My PO Box address is PO Box 1226, Hayesville, North Carolina, 28904. I'll probably write that right down in here as I'm editing and I'll also put it in the description. I think it's already in the descriptions, but if there's anything you guys needed to send to me and uh, you know, some things, you know, I'll open up on camera and kind of give you guys like, check out like Jeff has done before and so on and so forth. Now, I didn't pull this side apart yet because at this point, I'm not guaranteed that I can find these parts. So I figured I'll take one side apart. Everything should be matched or mirrored or whatever. I think the, uh, I think the slack adjusters, there's a left and a right, but everything else should pretty much be the same thing. Um, I want to make sure the availability is there. There's no sense in taking the second side apart if I can't put it back together with new stuff. So we're just kind of pausing on that and uh, it won't take that long to take it apart. But yeah, we plan on replacing the brake chamber, the airlines, the whole nine yards. Basically everything outboard from the frame is going to be all new. That way I shouldn't have to worry about it anytime soon. Here you can definitely see there's some minor cracking and everything in the brake drums. And uh, things are just kind of yucky. Now, I think when I come back for reassembly, I'm gonna bring over a wire brush and a whole bunch of brake clean and stuff because I wanna clean all that off and I'll probably hit it with a coat of at least some gloss black spray paint or something, just make it look a little bit new, especially as you start throwing those new parts on there. I just want it to look good. And uh, it's just kind of the person I am. Every time I do a little step like this, I try to recondition the best I can and clean things up. I know the brakes, they're gonna get dirty again, but it won't have this 25, 30 years worth of, let's see, 87, it's not, yeah, however many years of buildup on it. All right, guys, so I am up here at the local car quest here in Hayesville, North Carolina. And uh, this gentleman right here is Mike. He's the owner of the establishment. He's working really hard trying to find the exact replacement for this. Like I said, there's no lookup for this truck. So it's literally measuring all these dimensions, looking in the book, trying to find what is going to match up. He's even already tried to cross-reference the drum number and so far we're not finding anything. So this could be another one of those very challenging projects where everything on Goliath is made of pure unobtainium. Well, guys, it looks like he's got an updated version of the actual brake liners in stock, but they're more the quick change. So there's like an adapter kit that makes them work. Uh, but all that's good. Hardware kit, I believe all that he has. He's located the drums, but obviously he doesn't have them in stock. They have to get orders, so they may not get here for a day or two. Uh, he's still having a little bit of trouble tracking down the right brake chamber and the slack adjuster. But I'm pretty confident Mike will figure it all out. But Katie just called me. She's done with her appointment. So I got to jump in there and go pick her up. And I'll just wait here for Mike in a day or two. All right, guys. It is Memorial Day. And Katie's brother and uh, his boys are getting ready to head out, head back to Florida. Mama S left yesterday to head back over to Hendersonville. And the kids are working on their own projects over the house. I figured I better take this opportunity, come back up to Goliath, work on these brakes some. Now on Friday, Katie and I were on our way down to uh, Gainesville, Georgia for one of her uh, eye appointments. And Mike over CarQuest had called me and they pretty sure 99.9% .9 chance he's got everything all lined up, but most of the parts aren't gonna get delivered until tomorrow because of the holiday. So I figured I better come over here and get the other half of this taken apart get everything cleaned up. I'd like to paint it as well before I put it all back together. So we're gonna do that today so that tomorrow when I get the parts, it's just a matter of reassembly. 
Well guys, definitely a dirty job, but I am happy to say that this side came apart a little bit easier than the other side did. Now was it because I knew more what I was doing or did I just get lucky? I don't know, but it just seems like the bolts weren't quite as tight. Things weren't quite as rusted together with one exception. So in the center of each brake shoe, you have this little assembly with the rod that runs through the backing plate, through the gap between the backing plate and the shoes. Then it's got a little spring that goes over it and then just a little retainer plate. And that's just there to kind of hold the, the shoes in place. Now, on this system, it's kind of redundant because the pins that actually go through on the other end, they also hold the shoes in place. One of them was rusted into the backing plate. And as you can see, it's really thin and right in there, it was almost rusted through anyway. So it was very fragile. So trying to get this out without breaking it, because breaking it would have been even harder to get it out, was a little challenging. I had to get back there and chip it and I finally broke it free from the backing plate and then I could slide it out. One of the springs was completely missing on this side, so that keeper wasn't even doing any good. But like I said, it's more of a redundancy, not super, super critical. Also, you can see here, got a little bit of rust jacking. I already chipped some of it off, but we're gonna chip off a little bit more of that. And for those of you that don't know what rust jacking is, that's basically where two steel plates come together but moisture has the ability to get in between them and over time, rust will build up and it will actually build the scaly rust compound that will actually kind of grow and expand. It'll actually push the two places of steel together. This can be very powerful. I've seen this on frames and other brackets where we're talking a quarter inch thick bracket and it will actually bend the bracket. There's so much pressure behind that. So it's pretty common on, on old equipment like this, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and chip all that off. We're gonna clean that surface. We're gonna put a coat of paint on it to prevent it from coming back as soon. Um, I might even do like a thin layer of silicone on there just to try to seal it in when I bolt that brake chamber back on there. It might make it a little bit harder to get the brake chamber off later on, but if it's thin and I let it dry first, in theory it shouldn't, but if it at least seals that moisture from getting in between there, it may make it last longer. Well guys, as you can see, my hands were terribly filthy, so I didn't grab my phone very often doing a recording, but I've probably spent an hour and a half or maybe even the better part of two hours scraping with the five-in-one scraper, brushes, even a little bit of brake clean here and there, just trying to get them as cleaned up as I can. And they are so much better than what they were. But good enough to paint? Probably not. I mean, unless I get out here with like a steam cleaner or the pressure washer, there's just so many intricate areas that I cannot get the grunge out of. I mean, I've got all the bulk of it off. I cleaned up around all my Zerk fittings so I can grease everything. And I even hate to admit, I even found a couple that I didn't know were there. So there's a couple spots that I've missed in greasing this chassis since I've owned this truck. But now that I know they're there, obviously we will, we will get on that in the future. But I don't know that painting this is gonna do any good at this point. So, uh, I'm just gonna keep cleaning it a little bit more and get it ready for the new parts to go on. You look at all the buildup and gunk that's on that slack adjuster. That's what everything over there used to look like. And it's definitely a lot cleaner, but it is not clean by any means. And yeah, I could spend two more days here really cleaning this and prepping it for paint. But in the end, I don't think it's gonna be worth it. Even the black paint that's on there isn't sticking to the original reddish orange paint that was on there before they painted the truck when they built it into what is now Goliath. So putting new paint over old paint that isn't properly adhered to the original paint, it's kind of a waste of time. Well guys, my OCD got a little bit of the best of me. So I ran out to the store, bought some paint, bought some primer, bought some clear coat. Um, I came back and I just cleaned everything. Oh, I also bought one of those uh, brass brush cups that I can uh, put in the end of the drill to get into some of the intricate places. So I thoroughly cleaned the flanges, all right, where the actual drum slides up against the flange. I wanna make sure there's no dust and debris on that because we got new drums going in. Everything sits nice and flat and good, which is awesome. I cleaned up the area in front because this whole area right here 
you can see all that once the wheels are put on. So I, I cleaned that up really, really good and painted everything. Now, I was going to put those nice, pretty lifetime lug nut cover caps on there, but I was really shocked at how expensive they were. To buy a set of those is over $500, guys. A replacement cap is $14, but there's nothing wrong with these. I just thought those would dress it up, but I'm not going to pay $500 to just dress something up that doesn't really serve that much better of a purpose. I mean, Lifetime makes good products, but just wasn't really in the budget for right now. So these were just kind of discolored from age, but there was nothing wrong with them. So when I didn't tape them off and cleaned them all up, I still got to pull the tape off here in a second. Um, just want to let everything tack up first so I didn't get any fingerprints in it. And as you can see, I went ahead and primered the backing plate. As you can see, I went ahead and primered the backing plate and then I primered and painted everything back here. It's not perfect, it's just spray paint, but it's gonna seal it in and hopefully it won't rust as fast. Now I've got a couple more pieces to clean up, the pins that go through there. Um, and they go into these little teeny tiny bores, if you can see them right here. So I'm gonna take those pins home and clean those up on the wire wheel and the bench, because I just think it'll be easier than trying to hold them and do it here. Um, but also I'm gonna bring the brake hone back with me because I'm gonna hone those out really quick just to make sure that they're clean and clear. So when I put everything back together, I'll put it all together with like an anti-seize and hopefully if I ever have to do these brakes again in the near future, everything will come apart nice and easy. All right, guys, it's starting to get dark. I'm going to get ready to head home. I've got pretty much everything packed up. I still got those couple things I'll clean when I get home. But before I left, I went ahead and pulled the headlight trim buckets out of here and uh, shot a coat of paint on them as well. Didn't prep them or nothing. Just they were flaking bad. So I figured it's got to look better. So at least they're all black again. It won't last. But last time we prepped them, we sanded them really good. We even used a plastic adhesion promoter, but it turns out with the chrome plating on there, that didn't work. So I gotta find a way to strip the plating off and then I can paint them like for real. But that's neither here nor there. It has nothing to do with the brake job. Just thought I'd do it while I had the paint out. All right, guys, thanks to the trusty bench grinder, I got them all cleaned up and I sprayed them all down with some MP so they don't rust again until I go to use them. And then now we just wait for the new parts. Well, guys, I'm getting thoroughly frustrated with the whole brake thing. So. The drums that I got are too deep. They hit the backing plate before they actually seat on the wheel flange. So that's a no-go. Apparently, Mike says there's only one pair in the entire country that fit this. They're way out in California. No way to get them here in time. And they want $985 each for them, which is just ridiculous for a brake drum. So... I went to go see what we could do about getting my drums turned and unfortunately nobody around here has got a jig to put that on their lathe to turn it. There, there's the thickness is there. We, we can machine it if we had a place that could do it. So no go on that. So now I'm here trying to put the shoes on and it's supposedly like an updated style of shoe that's more of a quick change. You don't have to pull those bolts and pins out every time but there are some differences in them. If you look here, I can't get them to sit back against the backing plate. Cause you see the little hole right there? There used to be the pin that came through, a little spring on this side, and that would hold this all the way back up against. Well, this one doesn't have the provision in it, which easy enough, I could drill a hole, but also the hole where this spring goes in on the other one is actually more up here. And that puts it so close, it's actually interfering with the S-cam. So uh, back to the drawing board on this. I've also been working all day trying to find parts to get the tensioner to work. That's a whole nother video, but uh, I may have found something that works, don't know. All 
All right, guys, well, the saga continues on the brakes, but as you can see, I've got the right brake pads in place, and it's amazing. Now that the right ones, they pretty much just fell into place nice and easy, so I didn't even record it. I fought like hell to get those on there yesterday, and they still didn't want to fit right. They weren't centered properly. I just knew right off the bat they were not the correct thing. And I think I mentioned already that we're going to have to reuse the drums. I have tried every option and I'll show you exactly what's going on with the variance in the drums. So this right here is the closest drum I could find to match. And you can see right off the bat, there's definitely a difference in height on them. So on my old drum, from the hub face to the top of the drum, I've got right about seven and a half inches. But on the new one, we are eight and a quarter. I don't know if you can see that very well, but you just have to trust me. So the problem we're having is that when I slide the drum in place, the drum is hitting the backing plate before it is fully seated onto the wheel flange. As you can see, the center hole and the lug spacing are all fine. If I could just put the drum on backwards, it would work. But as you can see, when I flip it around this way, we are in contact with the backing plate and I still have three quarters of an inch gap right there. So the only feasible way that I can make these work is to mill three quarters of an inch off of this back side. Everything else will work just fine. And I wouldn't mind doing that. But the problem is I can't find a machine shop around here that can or will do it. I was even over in Chattanooga this morning trying to figure this all out with no luck. So I had another night of almost no sleep again went to bed at two got up at five drove the chattanooga was there by 7 30 um trying to find another set of brake drums that will work on it went through multiple resources machining these down are the only thing you can find problem is i don't have a shop to do it and i don't have time so i i may just have to reuse these old drums and i really don't like that idea well, scratch what I just said. I just got off the phone with a gentleman named Daryl. He's got a machine shop out on the other side of town, out there by where uh, Mike and Alicia live. And he says he just might be able to do this. He wants me to bring them out to him first thing in the morning and uh, so we can take a look at them. So that means I can't do anything else today because I don't want to go throwing the old ones on and then have to uh, take them all back off again to do this. So I don't think I can do anything else. I got other projects to work on, so I'll go find something else to do, and hopefully tomorrow we'll get back on this. All right, guys, it is the next morning. I'm back here up at Goliath. Now, I went over to the machine shop this morning and I dropped off the drums. He thinks he can do it. Doesn't look like it'll be a problem. He even chucked the drum up on his lathe to make sure that they would fit. So. You know, he's going to charge me $80 an hour, and he's not sure exactly how long it's going to be, but that's got to add to the cost of these drums, which are around $250 a piece. So hopefully he doesn't have any more than an hour or two into each drum. He says he can only take off about 50 thousandths per pass, and that flange is 5 8 thick. So it's going to take quite a few passes to uh, cut off that flange that we need to get the clearance. But while I'm waiting on that, I went up to CarQuest and I got the rest of my parts that had finally arrived, the two new brake chambers, the two new slack adjusters. And I'm gonna try to go ahead and get the rest of this put together and greased and serviced. Um, I won't be able to do the final adjustment until the drum itself is on, but I get everything else done so that once the drums get here, it's literally just slide them on, do the final adjustment, and this thing should be ready to roll to Laconia. Zach showed up. He's getting ready to go take his uh, motorcycle test today. So he's gonna come up here to the parking lot and practice his maneuvering so he's less likely to fail his test. So the new brake chambers are slightly different than the old brake chambers. Now I'm gonna to have to transfer the plug over to this one as well. And the mount part of the body here is definitely a little bit different. This one's longer, but the stroke is the same and the difference from the mating surface to the end of the rod is the same. So in theory, they should all do the same thing. The bolt pattern is the same. So let me get the plugs transferred over and we'll go to mounting these up. All right, well, the brake chamber's bolted in with relative ease, and even though there was a slight difference in dimension, the hoses that went from the bracket to the brake chamber itself were able to accommodate without any effort whatsoever. So now it's time to put the slack adjusters on. All right, well, brake chamber, slack adjusters, everything is in and with a primary adjustment. Now I cannot do the final adjustment till the drums are in place because I need to 
basically expand the shoes out until they make contact with the drum, essentially applying the brake to the drum. And then I can back it off and get my final adjustment just right and make sure all the geometry is good. And then I can check my actual rod pull. So at this point, I'm waiting again for drums. Nothing else I can do here at the moment. Actually, I got to run back up to Car Quest because I need to drop these old shoes off as a core. I forgot to drop them off when I was there this morning. That, and I think I'm going to pick up some of these tools that I think I'm done with. I should need very little to put the drums back on and uh, the wheels. So I think I'm done with a lot of this. I'm going to go put it all away. Well, guys, and just like that, I recorded that I was going to put my tools away, and I did. And then I went to go climb in the truck to run those uh, parts back to the Car Quest and... Daryl over the machine shop called me and said, hey, your drums are ready. So I drove all the way back out to Hanging Dog and picked up the drums and then back over to Car Quest and dropped off those shoes. And then Katie called and reminded me that the tag was going to expire on the truck. So went ahead and inspection done and got the tag renewed on it. And now I'm back over Goliath with brand new drums that are machined to fit, I hope. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and test these out. I'm going to try them on, see if they work. And if they do, we're going to clean them up a little bit throw them on there and then hopefully we'll be finished with this job just shortly all right guys it looks like we have success so the machine shop did a great job they took off that three quarters of an inch he was actually pretty fair with me on price he charged me 200 bucks to machine both drums so you know, when you figure each drum was $255, I got $355 in each drum. Still better than trying to get the $985 one shipped in. Saved us a bunch of money in the long run, although it was still a lot more expensive than I planned on. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and throw a couple lug nuts on there to hold those drums in tight where they should be, do my final adjustments, and then we should be ready to test everything and put the wheels back on. Well, geez, man, every time... I think I've got it taken care of. I was so excited, man. I was smiling. I was happy. The light was at the end of the tunnel. We were putting this all back together and I ran across another problem. So with the slack adjusters, there's a left and a right. And I think I went over that already. And uh, so I've got a part number 134-1018 for the left and a 1019 for the right. So uh, when I laid them out of the boxes, I laid them out left and right. I put them on, but I noticed that the other side just seemed weird. And like, it seemed like it was reverse of what I thought it should be. I was like, well, I don't know anything about this stuff, so I, I just put it on. Well, as I'm going to adjust it, I get, I kind of just noticed out of the corner of my eye, there's actually a part number stamped on the part, and it's not a 1018. It just happened to be a 1019. So somehow the wrong part got put into the wrong box, and I just happened to get two of the same size. So I called Mike up at CarQuest again. He's scrambling to try to see how fast he can get me one because he knows we got to leave in a couple of days. And tomorrow's Friday, the end of the week. We leave on Monday. Man, always something. Always freaking something. All right, so I just heard back from Mike. And they do have the right part number, but it's in their store that's over in Canton, North Carolina, which is, it's a little ways from here. Um, not any further than me going to Chattanooga yesterday. If they were to put it on their truck and send it back to the D.C., then have it reshipped out to their store, I wouldn't see it until Saturday morning. And I really don't want to wait that long to get this back together. So I have to go to Franklin, North Carolina tomorrow morning anyways for a doctor's appointment. i got to be there at 10. So I'm not going to come over here and work on stuff and then go over there for a doctor's appointment and then come back. So I think tomorrow morning, I'm just going to go straight to the store in Canton, pick it up myself first thing in the morning when they open, be back in Franklin by 10 a.m., do my doctor's appointment and then that way when i come home i can finish this up it's almost taxing sometimes how much of a pain in the butt stuff like this we're well over a week into doing a brake job well over a week just because of all these headaches and i'm sure this video is getting way too long so i'll stop talking right now hopefully that'll all work out in the morning and we'll see you guys again tomorrow guys i decided to wash up and pack up and get out of here nothing more i can do till i get that part on this job anyways i got a few other errands i need to run and it's not raining on me right now as you can see skies are beautiful this way but the rain is literally right there i can see the rain it's just not here yet so i gotta finish closing everything up 
I'm going to get out of here. Hey guys, about 7.30 in the morning. I've already driven all the way over to Canton, North Carolina. I got the right part number and I verified that's the right one inside. Now off to my doctor's appointment. All right, well, all in all, we made pretty good time this morning. We got all the way out to Canton. We got the part, as you saw. I went to my doctor's appointment. I arrived there like an hour early, so they got me in earlier than planned. And I was actually leaving there at my scheduled appointment time. Got back over to the house, changed into my grubby clothes. And now we're back up at Goliath and it's only about noon. So we're gonna get the slack adjuster put on and get everything in its final adjustment. And then I'll probably go ahead and do the rest of my pre-trip because we've only got three days until we leave. I'll get all of the chassis greasing and all that stuff done today. That way I don't have to crawl underneath the truck again before we go on the trip. All right, guys, a couple hours later and a lot of hard work. The brakes are done. I greased the whole chassis, drive shaft, all the slack adjusters, the steering points, the spring points, everything completely greased. So everything underneath my pre-trip is pretty much done. The only thing left on the pre-trip really it's just checking air pressures, and I like to do that the day I leave, just before I leave, so we'll wait till Monday to do that. But I realized that I pulled a dummy. I just worked really hard to get those wheels back on. And then I walked back here to get the jack, so I can uh, jack it up, pull the jack stains out from underneath, and I saw this laying on the floor of the trailer. I put the wheels back on, completely forgot to put my Centromatic balancers back in. So, I'm gonna pull the wheels back off and put these on. But I'm not gonna wait to end this video to do that because this video is obviously long enough already guys and i really apologize if this one is that long i don't even know how long it is but we're 10 days into doing this brake job i think and it's just way more footage than i ever intended in one video and i've got another project i want to do so i gotta get this one closed out so hopefully i can get this one edited and get it out to you pretty soon so guys stay tuned for that one but thanks for watching until the next time we see you keep those engines running no it really shouldn't be this hard to do simple tasks like brakes but with this truck, everything's hard to get. It's, it's what I get for owning old junk trucks. But, you know, it's a labor of love. I'd still rather deal with all this than have something new. Um, just because, I mean, look at this thing. Look at the character here. There's nothing else on the road like it. So I deal with these hardships to have the truck that I absolutely love.